How to run a successful one-shot RPG, today on Dungeon Craft. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and here we design our own games, our own terrain, and now do our own haircuts. And I'm Deathbringer. Level up your game by subscribing and click the bell icon so you'll be informed when we upload new videos every week. So today we're talking one shots and there are a number of reasons why you might want to run one. You want to try out a new game, introduce a new player, just a break from your regular campaign, or maybe you're preparing something for a convention. Whatever the case, there are three critical elements to running a successful one shot and we're going to go over them today. And they are the concept, the conflict, and the structure. I like big concepts for one shot, something that I know will attract people because oftentimes if I'm running it for new players, potential new players, they could do something else. They're not part of my regular game group, so I have to kind of pitch it to them in a way that's going to want to entice them. Same thing if I'm running it at a convention where, especially a big convention like Origins or Gen Con, these were gaming events back in the before times, but you only had two sentences to pitch your event in that catalog. So you want to have something that is broadly appealing and yet unique unto yourself. It's really going to grab the audience's attention. And here are some of mine. Macbeth, an improved version of Shakespeare's classic. Frankenstein, an adaptation of Mary Shelley's classic gothic novel. And 90 Nights of Hell. It's 1892, Whitechapel, London, and Jack the Ripper is on the prowl and the player characters have to catch him. These pitches are designed to appeal broadly, but also appeal to the type of player I like playing with. Someone that enjoys literature and an intellectual challenge and isn't going to take it too seriously. Now, I've talked about those before, so I'm going to pitch a new one today. This one's called Cloak House, and I designed it specifically for my Eldritch Rules Light Cthulhu RPG, which is available on Patreon right now. And the premise is this. The character's wealthy uncle, William Cloak, has recently passed away. And he's leaving his huge mansion and considerable fortune to whichever among his relatives can stay in Cloak House for 40 consecutive hours. Now, is this an original idea? Absolutely not. However, it doesn't need to be. That's one of the things I'm trying to teach you on Dungeon Craft. You can have a cliched plot. It really doesn't matter. Your players aren't going to care because they're really just sitting down to to eat some pretzels, Cheetos, and, and play a game. You're not game mastering for Siskel and Eber here, so you don't need to put that kind of pressure on yourself. If a plot works in the past in movies, feel free to recycle it and use it again. Now, here are the key elements that you need to have. First, a time limit. You ever see a movie where there's a ticking bomb? Ever notice it's more tense than a movie that doesn't? Any kind of time limit is a good thing. So is a space limit. That's the second element. You want to isolate the players, have them in one location, if possible, in this case, it is a cloak house and it is isolated. It's on the top of a mountain where there's a very narrow bridge connecting it. And this is back in the 50s, so there are no cell phone towers, so we don't have to worry about them contacting the outside except by the landline, which is going to be quickly cut. Next, we need a tight structure. And when I say a tight structure, it's got to have six key elements, but this is important. We also want it to be versatile. We don't want to pre-imagine what the the ending is going to be to try to railroad the player characters in that direction. We want it tightly structured so that no matter what happens, the, you as the game master, you can react to it, but the players are the ones that are steering the ship. And this is good because when I design a one shot, I want the ability to use it again and to be able to sit through it as an observer and have a totally different experience. And the final thing you need is internal and external conflict. Let's start with the conflicts. The external conflict is William Cloak Sr., who is a wizard, evil sorcerer, lich thing who is living in a bricked up wall in the basement. And he can do all sorts of ghostly things like footsteps and cold spots and moans and messages written on blood on the walls, all that kind of stuff. He can also control the minds of people when they're sleeping, including the butler and a maid, and force them to do his bidding. The second external conflict is William Cloak Jr., who 20 years ago drowned his mother in a tub and proceeded to go on a killing spree in the neighborhood. He was eventually captured and remanded to the Arkham Sanatorium for the Criminally Insane, where he has been catatonic for just about two decades. But on the first night of the scenario, William Sr. will use his mind powers to snap William Jr. out of his catatonia. He'll kill a guard, escape from the sanitarium, make his way to Cloak House, 
and then attempt to kill all the rest of the player characters. So there's not just one external conflict, there's two. And if William Jr., the serial killer, comes up short, then William Sr. will take over and vice versa. Now comes the fun part, the inner conflict. And this is stuff that you really can't do in a regular role-playing game. It's the big advantage of doing a one-shot. You can have player characters who hate each other and even want to kill one another. Ava Cloak Rackham lost all her money in the stock market and hates her philandering husband, Pierce. Her sister Sloane Cloak is a has-been actress who's having an affair with Pierce. Pierce Rackham doesn't love Ava or Sloane, he just wants their money. Sister Mary Constance is a compulsive gambler who owns a chunk of money to loan sharks. Dorothy Cloak needs the money to pay for her son's life-saving surgery. So all of these characters hate one another and would be willing to kill one another to get the money. They're all juicy. Anyone would be fun to play. And that's the key. If you want to see a great movie, watch Glenn Gary Glenn Ross. All the characters have clear goals that conflict with one another. The playwright, David Mamet, understands there's no such thing as an unimportant character. In a one-shot, Every character is the main character. And now for the plot. It's got six parts. The hook, the investigation, the complication, the turn, the climax, and the denouement. Now, the hook is the opening where the player characters find out what they want. In this case, they have to inherit the money. So. The hook is the part where they're taken from the train station, driven up the road, they see the bridge leading to the house, I describe Cloak House, the lawyer reads the will, and at that point they know exactly what they have to do. They have to survive 40 consecutive hours and they know what's on the line a huge amount of money. And I actually time myself, I was able to do that in seven and a half minutes. It's important that the hook be quick. You want your players to know what they have to accomplish within about 10 minutes. Again, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. In the opening scene, Alec Baldwin berates the characters and tells them they have one week to meet their sales goals. The top two salesmen will keep their jobs, the rest will be fired. There's a time limit, the stakes are high, and we know the stakes within the first eight minutes of the film. Two, the investigation. This is where the players gather the clues necessary to solve the mystery. You can't just drop an undead lich on the player characters. You have to have some hint that there is some sort of sorcery going on and that there's some sort of ritual so it doesn't come out of left field at the end. Also, the characters come to Cloak House unarmed and each of the rooms contains a potential weapon. Pool cues, fireplace, pokers, letter openers, antique guns. The complication occurs on the first night when William uses his mind powers to create strange sounds, footsteps, cold spots, all the creepy stuff that you would expect from a haunted house. Now the player characters know there is in fact a supernatural element at work here. The turn is the point where the tension gets ratcheted up to the next level. And this is important. No matter what the player characters do, they can't stop it. It's something that occurs independent to them. In the film Alien, when the alien bursts out of John Hurt's chest, now the crew of the Nostromo knows that there is a dangerous alien life form hiding somewhere on their spaceship and it has the potential of killing them and there's no way for them to get out. That's the turn. The turn comes noon the second day when the police arrive with news that the character's cousin William escaped from the sanitarium last night. Now they urge them not to panic because the sanitarium is 30 miles away. And nevertheless, they should be on guard. What they don't know, of course, is that he's stolen a car and he's already on the grounds. <laughs> The climax occurs when William Jr. starts stalking everybody. So Pierce tries unsuccessfully to use the phone and then ducks into a secret passage he found earlier connecting the trophy room with the library. And there in the library he meets William Cloak Jr. and they start struggling over a knife. And that's when Ava arrives and she's got the gun and now she has to decide is she going to shoot her serial killer cousin? or the husband, which she hates, and this is the perfect opportunity. Then the rest of the characters arrive, and it's a big cluster fudge with them trying to kill William and each other. The denouement is after the game is over, where the players share their characters' real motivations. Every character needs to have a unique, interesting plot that is critical to the overall story. So if you're going to have a butler-type character or assistant-type character, they should want to kill their master something that 
will drive them through the story. Always remember this about RPGs. To the player, their character is always the main character. So you have to have something for them to do. A strong player character, a strong plot drives itself. The player should never be wondering, what do I have to do? Where do I have to go? They have tons of options open to them. A strong concept, internal and external conflict, a confined location and a time limit. These are the elements that make for a strong one shot. Follow them and you can't go wrong. Now, if you like this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and drop a comment below. Also below, you'll find a link to my Patreon where you can get your own copy of Eldritch Horror Rules Like Cthulhu RPG, as well as a copy of Cloak House and access to my Discord server and DM's notebook. And top tier patrons get access to extra videos so you can see me run the game and watch my nutty players kill one another. And now it's time for me to get back to whatever it is I do. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm Professor Dungeon Master. I'll see you again next week. And until then, may all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. I too once had an undead uncle. He would mop the floors compulsively. Problem is, he kept kicking the bucket. <laughs> now watch more Dungeon Craft.